live, baby. All right, let's go live. Go do it. Go get your glass. Okay. I mean, that's not that important, really. Uh, well, depends on how much you want to enjoy drinking your beer. This is true. Okay. Well, here. Are we we're live already? Um, I believe so. I never really know until somebody says something. If anybody's watching, if you can uh, say something. Always very helpful. Say something. All right, I'll be back in two seconds. So welcome aboard to the Mix of the Bastard session finale of uh, the song Pyrenees with my good good buddy Gavin Gardner in Toronto. And uh, yeah, we're gonna go we're gonna go through this one and uh, talk about everything. The song, mic decisions, mix decisions, pizza choices. Pizza choices, beers I'm that we're drinking. Also, um, tonight at midnight, uh, the new record comes out. So this is a nice way for me and Gav to celebrate um, work on this record. We've been super excited about it and really excited to share it. So the time is now. Okay, Simon Walker says hi, so he can uh, he can hear stuff, I guess. All right. Actually, Welcome aboard, Simon. Good to have you back. Uh, we always like having you here. Um, it's always a pleasure to uh, steal a couple hours of your evening. <laughs> I was, we were chatting today and I was saying, has it been two years since we mixed this record? Or one year? I don't know why I was thinking about this on my bike ride today because... Or three years. I found, I found out, yeah, well, Jen was born a year ago. And you found out in October when we were driving down there. Yeah. So that would mean two years ago, right? We did it? Well, two years ago. We weren't done mixing the record then. Weren't we done when you found out in October? Ah, uh, man, if we were done, we would have been passing it on to all those guys. To listen to. That's true. We were almost done. Yeah, so. But this one, we, I mean, this song was one of the first songs. No, that's not true. This was an earlier one, though, wasn't it? I feel like I wanted to kind of save it, but. Well, I mean, this, it was interesting, this song, because I feel like you kind of knew this was going to be a single from, from the go. Am I right about that? Yeah. I mean, and it's got, sing, it's got, let's be honest, it's got single written all over it. Got a great single potential. I mean, it has the 707 all over it, so <laughs> that's single material right there. Well, the label wanted to put this out. Well, when I said the label, it's my label, but. <laughs> Outside, who, who, who are kind of co-releasing it with, with Shuffling Feet, they they wanted to lead with this one, and I I didn't want to lead with Pyrenees because I want I thought that, um, it wasn't fully representative of the record in a way. Like I thought that I could only be good. The first song we led with was like setting the tone for the record, and I and I was really excited about like getting people into that, and then my drugs, my dreams, and then giving them. Pyrenees, which I think was like the, it's like the easiest, it's like the easy, easily easiest, like most fun tune on the record. I think. So. I'm still waiting for the one with the bongos to come out. I know you've been. <laughs> I still feel like that's the that should have been the first single, but hey, what the hell do I know? Uh, I just love the bongos. Man, I, I I was talking to the suits about it, the and they just weren't buying it. <laughs> what do they know anyway? Yeah, Unless they're watching, then. Actually, that then what do they know anyway? <laughs> they're watching that they're not, they're not busy enough. Just joking, Simon. Um, cool. So uh, yeah, let's get let's get into it. Like, I, I definitely this is like one song that I want to talk about the uh, the actual songwriting process of at some point, Gav. Um, yeah, that'd be great. Because it's got, a, I think it has a really fun story, and I've been like itching to talk about it, and and uh, and I haven't actually kind of 
on that yet online. So yeah, and we we've covered a lot of the other, like a lot of the choices that I made or that we made, and we can definitely. And this is this one's a bit different because it has a drum machine as opposed to well, there's some real drums too. But um, what want to just play the song from the top for now and then have a listen? Sure. I think that'd be awesome. Um, I'm into that. I was saying to you before we started that. This one I found it was actually kind of tough to call back up, just because of the notes where there was no pictures like our other ones. It was just these these mix notes, <laughs> which I mean, oh, I gotta set the prime time. What do you mean? Sorry, the mix notes in Pro Tools? Not it wasn't part of our mix with the bastards like Google files. No, it wasn't. It was just like a word file that we kept. And uh, I mean, it wasn't that that difficult. But we did a lot of EQ actually on the word. Back. I mean, is. It's not it's not notched or anything and it's not even indented so it's actually pretty uh tricky and i made a note here when i was recalling it that i don't think i think the bass is only coming through the parallel compression but let's anyway, anyway let's listen i don't think it's actually getting summed which is cool so here we go pyrenees
Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> That's the biggest moment of the whole song. That's Pro Tools, eh? <laughs> Oops. Let's try let's try that moment again. <laughs> And then it just kind of devolves. I think guy says a lot about you. <laughs> uh, it's, I mean, just hearing it, I mean, that was pretty disappointing when the Pro Tools crapped out right at that moment. But uh, it's just such, such an exciting song. I love it. I, I, can't, I can't believe we mixed this. We mixed this on my old computer before I got a new computer. I must have been shit in the bed all over the place. <laughs> Yeah. It definitely doesn't feel like too much. I think it does feel like enough though, because it is huge. I mean, those, those like, it's like a reverse Tom reverb. And then did we sample an explosion there or something? Or, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, there's the, I, I, I remember having that conversation. Let's see. Uh, Drum echo. Oh, we. I think I imported a floor tom or something to make it sound like a candle. Let's see. That, that, that's the floor tom. I don't know. Maybe we didn't import a cannon. Yeah, that might have. That might have been something that we imported actually specifically for that moment. But I mean, I remember actually having the conversation about like should that moment cut. And when I was looking for the Pro Tools session, the right one. There's a few that were labeled no cut and and cut because I, it was a pretty big process to actually cut everything out and like actually mute moment. So we saved two options in case we were like, eh, we went too far. Can't hear you at all. Oh, I muted you. There you are. Oh my gosh, I'm back. People got muted me. Sorry about that. I just wanted to have the spotlight. So you're back now. Okay, great. Thank you. Sorry about that. We're flying a little loose tonight. Getting, uh, here. <laughs> Getting just chirped in the YouTube chat here. Fuckers. Um, so anyways, we were just talking about that, that moment and how, how much we fussed over that, that the moment when the pro tools kind of dropped out, um, which was, is always uh, the case because it's the biggest moment. So there's the most things and that, yeah, anyway, whatever. Yeah. Anyways, we're, I'm back. I think. Can you guys hear me now? Yeah, you're back. Can you hear you're me? Can you, can you hear me now? <laughs> Classic. Uh, it's it's cool. I mean, there's so many things happening, and yeah, I don't know. Do you want to start by just talking about the songwriting process? I'd love that. I mean, I remember you telling me about it, and I remember this song being very 
uh, ghost for you guys. And because there was a, there was an original demo that you made. I mean, you should be talking about this. I'll just shut up. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, I love to hear your interpretation of it. But um, so I, I was on tour. Even he was on tour in uh, in France in the Basque Country, um, which I'm supposed to be back uh, visiting in in November for a show that hasn't been announced yet. But we'll see what happens there. But um, I've been very fortunate. Even has been able to play. Um, did we ever play there, Gab, with the Wind Sky? Did even him and Wind Sky ever play in Sar? Oh, I don't think so. No. Man, that would have been the best. Anyways, it's like one Maybe of my favorite November. places. Yeah, it's one of my favorite places in the world. It's like uh, this beautiful little village. Um, it's about I don't know an hour and a bit in from Biarritz on the very south, right on the border of Spain and France. And and uh, we had played there a few times and we've made friends there and, and um, the Rebeheims fans and we're massive fans of what they do. They put on really cool shows and they had us playing this festival they have every year called Uso Pop. And uh, so for whatever reason, it was our last night of tour and I was a designated driver um, in my own band. I don't know. That seems strange. but <laughs> On the last night of tour? On the last night of tour. So, Walk home. Um, uh, anyways, we played in the village and they had provided us, I, I had, I'd written in advance, I, I had reached out to them in advance and just been like, Hey, is it, is there any way that we can stay for longer? Cause we weren't flying home right away. So I was like, it'd be amazing if we could like stay for a few extra days. Cause I'd like to do some writing. And, and, uh, they're like, sure. We'll put you up. At, pa- my friend Patchy was just like, um, uh, he's like, yeah, we'll put you up at my dad's hunting cabin. And somebody described it, described it as a hunting cabin. And I was like, oh, man, like, OK, well, I'm like, we're musicians, whatever. It'll be fine. And like, I mean, I grew up, I spent a lot of time hunting camps growing up and stuff. So I was like, this will be it'll be it'll be fine. It'll be cool. Anyways, we play the show. Um, the show goes great. Um, and we hang out and everybody has everybody's having some drinks and my, not not myself. I think I maybe had a, a drink after the show, but um, because they're like, they're like, make sure be safe because it's a crazy drive up to this to the house, to the cabin. And I was like. Yeah. I'm like, how crazy can it be? So <laughs> the band funny. is drinking, the band is drinking this, like, I had a sip of it. It tastes like gasoline. It was like some crazy high octane punch that I think Patchy's dad had made. Anyways, it was kind of backstage for the artist, and it was like <laughs> some serious, that's a serious kick to it. But anyways, it's pouring rain. The festival's inside in this like a uh, kind of arena building. And, um, I was like, all right, let's go. I wanted to get back up to the to the wherever we were going. We hadn't seen the place yet and and just like have a drink with the band and stuff. So we got in two vehicles and I had the lead vehicle and I, and I was with um there I don't know, Henri, I guess. It was me him, this this older French gentleman who who didn't really speak much English and my my French and is not great and my Basque is like really not great at all. So he's kind of guiding me up the mountain, telling me which way to go and stuff like that. And it's dark. It's like dark, rainy night, torrential downpour. And he keeps going like, slow down. But like just with his hand signals, like, slow down, slow down. I was like, ah, oh, we're fine. And uh, anyways, the other vehicle's following behind me. And we get up to the top and we like pull into the driveway of this place. And it's this massive villa, this beautiful, beautiful home, way up in the top of the mountains, literally like at the top of this one ridge line. And when you walk to the end of the driveway, if you walk like an extra couple hundred feet, you're in Spain. So you could do that kind of like you're in Spain, you're in France, you're in Spain, you're in France, kind of thing. Um, so it's pouring rain. We're up there. It's the last night of tour. We're like, you know, like having the, the normal last night of tour shenanigans. Um, and it was just it was just amazing. And we got to stay there for a few days. So I was like really excited. And in the morning, I woke up, took my electric guitar, the airline that I was touring with. Uh, my airline guitar, my uh, tuxedo. And I just went down on this like abandoned tennis court that they have there. And I programmed this like little drum beat uh, into my phone. And I pretty much like the song just like came out. I had a piece of paper. I had like my notebook there. And before, I think before the band had even woken up yet, I was just like, the whole song was just like, I was just feeling really inspired. I was like, um, it was a weird time in my life, but I was, but it was a good time. And, 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 uh, and tour had finished and when you finish a tour it always feels successful or um exciting and stuff and so i was just feeling inspired and and i and i put this whole song together and and we were touring it was me and kaylee 
and Phil, who was has who that's the the lineup for Evening Hymns for like the last bunch of years, and and then we were traveling with friend Seb uh, Seb Perry, who's a um, uh, an audio engineer from from Ottawa area. He lives in Montreal now, and he was our touring sound guy, and he had brought recording equipment. Um, so we our plan was to spend a few days in this villa, just like writing some new songs and like recording these demos. So we recorded a demo for this song. Maybe I should just can I share? Can you? Can yeah. I, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll stop my share and you can just share your screen and then the audio will go as well. So go for it. Um, okay, so can you tell me if you can hear this? Uh, you need to just share your screen and audio first. Oh, shit, I'm an idiot. I think I know how to do this by now. Share screen. Um, anyways, this was, this was one of those moments where you like kind of like chase the demo. Oh, yeah, we definitely did. Oh, you disabled you disabled uh, screen sharing. I did. Yeah. How do you do that? I don't know. You have obviously like you have some type of authority problem <laughs> <laughs> from, from from your upbringing. Uh, one participant can share time. All participants. All right, there you great. go. Share computer sound and let me find my iTunes. Boom, here we go. Um, great, you can see that. Yep. Okay, so yeah, this is the uh, this is that uh, this is that demo, and uh, maybe I'll just I'll play like up into the the first chorus. So you'll hear this like little delayed drum machine, crappy kind of drum machine sound that I had on my phone um, that we ended up printing, and then. Uh, Phil and Kaylee and me did did the rest of it, and uh, I remember I was touring with my with my uh, my M ninety five. Is that what that microphone's called? My vocal mic. I'm drawing a blank right now. Anyways, um, so that all the vocals were done through that. But are you, are you the new? That's a ripoff from uh, from the Goonies. If you recognize that sound, it's from that's from the Goonies. Anyways. so different yeah it, it is do you it have is. the uh do you have the sessions for that still i just got them yeah, yeah i just I actually got uh, seb just sent them to me this week the and, uh, session you should, send, you should put that out as a b-side kaylee was all kaylee's always been really super attached with um 
with that version. But I, that's, I mean, I remember that from the from the mix session actually, because there was a lot of back and forth about if we were going too far away from that. Which I mean, we went very far away from that. I, I mean, I'm so happy with that. I, I always, I mean, that that's always been a demo to me. It never felt like, uh, like I, yeah. I, in my opinion, we surpassed it like drastically. But, but, but Kaylee, who's like my my partner, but also like she's the one that like I send every, like I'm like, is this good? Um, she was always really attached. To them. So that was probably a lot of my, you know my demoitis was probably just like her demoitis being reflected through me in the mix session because her opinion on the stuff means so much to me, you know? Yeah. So, well, I mean, there's lots of cool things there. I mean, I, I do think that where we ended up honors that, although, it, I mean, there is the shuffle vibe to that one, which this doesn't, doesn't have also feel like your vocal performance on this version is just a lot more compelling. Although, you know, the falsetto is cool. And that, does, I think the falsetto is cool. Yeah, it does really here. fit the other one. And I was going to say, like, turn your vocals down and put that out. You know, it sounded good. Yeah. I was, what do you mean, turn my vocals down? Well, turn them down, down a minute. Too vocal, loud. Turn them up. <laughs> this, is coming from, this is coming from the guy that's always trying to mix my vocals up. And then I'm always be like, turn those vocals down. That's true. That was a constant conversation. Well, speaking of the vocals, it's interesting. Oh, there's oyster barking at us. There's oyster. Uh, you recorded like we did a lot of work on the song here after the fact. Yeah, I, I can just see from the session, just like <clears throat> we recorded, we recorded the piano here. We recorded your vocals here. Kaylee's vocals were recorded here. I think the I think Kaylee recorded bass here too. I don't know. I don't have. I don't have my. Uh... I have a band in the studio right now, so I wasn't able to pull the session. But I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure because I remember we were working on it together, and I just thought she's best bass player. Um, I'm just gonna pull it up here for a sec. Yeah, we recorded that here. So cool. Just changes the whole vibe. Sorry, yeah, super. There. No, no, no. I, I was just listening. Super important part for sure. Yeah, because like, I think before it's that, doing almost as much as the drums are as far as driving it once there, you know. Yeah, and there's like there's a low bass synth that's holding the low low end down before that. Oh no, that's later. Nothing really in the low end. I think it's also just awesome that it's so open until that bass comes in, and then the bass just kind of roots it with those quarters. Yeah, like it makes it focus. And, yeah, that's awesome. I love it. Um, let's talk about. Well, are you cool if we just dive into the drums? Right yeah, now? man. I, I mean, they're I mean, so crazy sounding. I love it. I just want. I also want to say thanks for doing all of these. It's been it's been uh, so fun to like revisit these tunes, but also it's a lot of work for you on your end to like pull all these up again and settle your shit up and stuff so oh, it's my thanks pleasure, right? it's also so nice i mean it comes out at midnight tonight so it's nice that we're hanging out tonight just having some beers yeah totally and I, honestly it's quite fun for me to revisit them and just see why i mean i remember we were so um what's the word i'm looking for just like every every decision we made was like not labored over but we just were like very very Decide, deliberate. Deliberate. That's the word I'm looking for. We're very deliberate, and so it's fun to go. It's fun to go back and see those things and 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 listen to them again. You know, um, so these drums, they're not real drum, or they're not uh, acoustic drums. These are all from a drum machine of yours, correct? Yeah. Yeah. Which was super fun, and I think like we went through, cut them up. I can just see here, and I th oh because they came in. You moved them around a bit. I think you tightened up the timing or something. We did. We did tighten up the timing, but also they came in like on one track or something like that. So I was like, No, no, no. I honestly think the kick and snare and stuff came in on one track, and so we had. Hold on, I'm bringing in. I'm bringing in a special guest, Gav. Got to bring in a special guest here. Look at this beauty. Is that Charlie? Get in here, Jackie. <laughs> no, don't let Esther <laughs> see. I know you're right. There's only snares, so we must just move them around. I lied. Pardon me. So there's only snares and kicks on their own tracks. So I lied. 
Which Kaylee, is thought I, Kaylee thought that I was telling her to come in for the special. We'll get her in. We'll get her in a bit. In a bit. Uh, so here's the drums on their own. I mean, there's a lot, a lot going on there. Damn, those sound really good. I mean, definitely there was a little bit of channeling of Phil Collins happening, I feel like, with those toms on your end. And then I was just like, oh, we're going. <laughs> but it's... also also the, the delay that's on the underlying drum part is really reminiscent of the demo drums. Yeah. That little, so I, I do think that there's, it's not so different. I mean, I know it's different. This is that's a demo and this is a production but yeah but i mean we were definitely informed by that plus i switched the chord pattern too oh yeah i think but so. it's cool so the the what's happening on the drums is it's all coming off of 707 correct yeah so you're playing that with your fingers then yeah and were you I don't playing i don't sequence were you playing it one like one instrument at a time or like kicks no so well, i don't was playing it it's live hi hat hi hats too yeah, yeah. Actually, like this though. Yeah, dude, I was going with this. <laughs> and then, do you like do you quantize that afterwards? The hi hats, or is that just you just played it that consistently? Dude, I'm good. <laughs> uh, okay, well then let's let's just done here. Like so this. Dun, dun, dun. Here you can just do. And this. then the toms were overdubbed. So. Um, that delay that we're talking about is actually, it's an analog tape echo, so here's without it. Boring. And then with it. But it's also, I don't know, a lot of that is just that. It's interesting with that analog tape delay, it almost sounds like there's like a pitch shifter on there. But it's just the way the kick drum and the snare drum are hitting it on their own. Um, another thing what? I think that's a big part of the drum sound is actually this um, Neve uh, reverb. It's like a non-linear AMS reverb. So this is with it on. That's without it. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's, it's, do it again. So that's it's off. crazy. It's doing the low end of it. Oh yeah. It's so much heavy lifting. Jeez. Yeah. I mean, I, I'll actually use that effect on a lot of sort of like more organic stuff, but not so drastically because it just kind of, it sort of brings the drums out like that, obviously, but also sort of smears them stereo in a cool way. But in this case, I mean, it, it's it's almost like a sort of strange, tight um, stereo delay in this in the setting that we're using it. Like no pre-delay um, and the non-linear setting. I actually didn't realize how much it was doing until I did that. Yeah, that's pretty wild. Yeah. I don't think, I mean, the symbols you, you overdubbed, those are like, those are real symbols, correct? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we flew those around. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know what to say about that except it's a really cool ass drum sound. <laughs> I wouldn't mind cutting actually to the the break and listening to that sort of reverse, like this listening to the moment that we were talking about engineering, which is this. Oh it again what is that about <laughs> yeah, I love that so much it's so cool I still love it man I still air drum it every time I hear it yeah and that's a cool thing um, so the other thing that's happening on those toms is they are running out to the H3000 which is making them even wider. Let me just mute that bass for a second. Hear that? Yeah, I love it. I love it all. 
<laughs> that's so, actually so there's actually that, right now we're hearing two two h three thousands there's one that we printed which is like the widener effect that we use on your vocal for the whole record and then the other thing that's happening is um a patch that you and i made called uh, buenos pizza which yeah. was uh, based off of a patch called buenos nachos that's actually just like a preset in in the box and then we just i don't even remember what we altered it to but that's what's giving it that sort of like swimming sound that's happening. This is a cool, this is like a cool remix like this. Just drums. What's yeah. th oh, this is uh, what is this? Outro bass. Oh yeah, this is us recording the outro bass riff. Oh, that's a cool riff too. We should listen to that. I'm all over the place right now. I'm loving this. <laughs> so we printed that th out through the distressor. Look like I don't even remember that. Yeah, it's printed through the distressor with quite a pretty heavy compression. And then we EQ'd it in the bottom. I mean, you can see we basically took all the low end off. I remember we kind of had to fight that part to like really, because we didn't want to interfere with the low end of the bass happening. Um, yeah. But we wanted that part to actually be there. And so it's without the EQ. And then with you. And yeah, then it's also nice. been through a sound amp. Let's do a lot. Yeah. I mean, they're both together without this together. This is how it was just through the distressor. And then. Yeah. Yeah, because on something, I mean, it's a very cool part, but with something like that, if, since there's so much low end and there's already so much low end, low end going on, we just really didn't need that extra information. It kind of just clouded things up. So it's a cool, it's a really cool bass sound without those effects on it, but it would have just got lost, I think. Yeah. I mean, you can show that that sounds like in the mix. I mean, it's like super dubby when it's gone. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. It's like, uh, it's a cool little polyrhythmic part, actually. It adds a lot to that. Yeah. You don't really hear it, though. It's cool. Yeah. It's kind of subliminal. I like it, too. I also like it. Um, and then, oh, yeah, we should, let's talk about, because so Simon played, uh, Simon Walker played uh, like guitar on this song on a few, a few different things, it looks like. There's, uh, or maybe there's only two passes here. Um, I'll just solo this, which is, I think this, I remember when this came in, we were kind of struggling with this to try to figure out how to fit it in. I mean, that's a cool sound already, but. Um, so. Simon was over here and we were chatting about this uh, part and he said that he recorded it with um, the Firebird, which is a, one of, is my Firebird actually, it's sitting in the back of the studio there, through a, an old Watkins copycat tape echo and into his Vibralux with the wah pedal. And then you and I, where you actually played a wah pedal live while we were mixing it to give that like sort of, fil not sort of, to give it that filter sweep sound, which is this. This is classic. This this is I think it's like this is like from listening to so much Phoenix, so many Phoenix records. It also has a Daft Punk thing to it too. No, it's a classic dance. It just yeah. like builds this. And you can hear that just that wah pedal just like. The only thing that I'm doing it to it here is adding a little bit of extra spring reverb to it. So that's without it. It's got lots of delay on its own, and then. That part's so cool. 
I, I remember that really well. Like I remember like sitting on the floor of the studio and just like playing the wall with my hand. I remember it. I know it. I could like take, I could go back to the square inch of your studio where I was. That, that moment was felt so, it was so fun for me to do that. Oh yeah. I remember that too. It was really fun. And then we probably had some Thai for lunch after that. <laughs> <laughs> I would, I think that's a safe bet. So there's another guitar part here too. That's also quite cool. That's how I'm played. And, uh, it's a pretty classic walker part I like it so what's happening there is that we just sent that out to the echoplex um, tape echo and then they're kind of panned hard left and right so it sort of is like this explosion that goes boom Almost like an aftershock, you know. That was my take on it, anyway. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go through this video once it's done and just like edit it all your little sound effects that you make. Maybe you could actually just turn all my hand motions into a dance video if you want. Uh, and then there's also a, a Kaylee's guitar part too. This is classic Kale. And then we reamped that here through the Leslie, it sounds like. Yeah. Did I play that part? That sounds like a Kaylee part to me. I feel like there was one part that I played that was like that. Oh, I don't no, think it's on this. Not a song. Oh, right, okay. It says Kaylee right on it, so it's probably Kaylee. Uh, so that's also not a super a Leslie, actually. Part. That's a that's the Pan Man, which is a um, Soundtoys plugin, famous uh, made famous by Madonna in the in Ray of Light. Oh man, I fucking love that song. You wonder what that song gets stuck in my head, like uh, for I, you wonder what it hasn't been stuck in my head for um, a while, but it used for probably like five or six years. It was in my head every day. You ever mess around? Wee, 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 wee. Oh my god, it's so good. <laughs> there we go. Uh, yeah. Do you ever mess around with this? this no, no, I don't think I've ever used it. I have it, but it's cool. I mean, I, I used the hardware version once, and uh, I was like, well, "What is what is the hardware version?" It's, it's I think it's called the Pan Pan Man. I can't remember what it's called, but it just basically is this. And I mean. At one point, I was like, I gotta get the hardware. And then I was like, what do we, you don't need to get a hardware for a thing that's just literally moving it back and forth. And I mean, it, it does uh, a lot. Yeah, do. But it's cool because you can set the speed, you can sort of set the slope. Uh, well, not the slope, actually, the width and then the smoothing. Yeah, it's a, it's a fun little uh, odd pan thing, basically. But there's not a ton of guitar in this song. That's, that's it. Um, I think, right? This this song, I feel like this song has more guitar on it than any other song on the record. That's funny. Yeah, maybe. You're but right. there still isn't that much guitar. But the guitar is super powerful. Like. Yeah, I love the guitar. So moving down this thing, then we also have a, a couple of synth tracks. These are sort of mainstay synth tracks in any evening hymns song that I've mixed. Uh, yeah. One, the C. And what's the other one called? The Cure Drone. What is the C? C is the uh, Roland SH-101 string synthesizer. Oh, right, 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 right. It's, it just sounds like the C to me. It kind of does one thing and really well, which is like this is like thick. It's kind of it's kind of like a Tame Impala kind of thick. Like that's what it does. I yeah. use it on. I use it all the time. But the cool sound. It, it looks like we didn't really do anything to it. I just took out a, a little bit of stuff, sort of below 80 hertz, and then it's. We got another. We got a guest here. <laughs> what do we got now? Carly, stay back. Kitty, come on in. Oh, yeah. The animals are in for the night. All right. That's not true. <laughs> um, yeah, almost thing happening. That Although it is going out to this, the uh, Buenos Noches. 
which is doing quite a lot to just make it feel kind of fucked up. Is this without it? Is with it. It's sort of like a phaser f with a detuned thing happening, and then, yeah. and then that's also actually the Buenos is going through the Cooper Time Cube plugin, which is simulating a delay that's actually comprised of garden hoses. So it has like a little speaker driver on one end of a garden hose, and then a little uh, like pickup mic on the other side. It's pretty wild. So it just kind of spreads it into more stereo. What do we got here? This is a cure. Oh yeah, this thing's awesome. And the hi-hat. So actually, and this... Uh, you must be doing a lot to that, because I feel like I probably didn't send that so... so Washed out like that. Uh, well, did I? Maybe I did. Well, again, I'm just rolling up below 80 hertz, but then it's also going through um, an analog phaser here. I'll show you, which is this instant phaser. I'm getting into the new shit here right away. That's what we do. That's, what, that's why we're here. Um, it's going through... Can you see this now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that in, that even tight instant phaser there. It's pretty small on the screen, so maybe you get as close as you can. Yeah, that thing's so cool looking. Yeah, actually, I had the flanger here too. It's not patched in right now, but uh, it is a really very musical sounding phaser. You can't really get it to do like the classic, like uh, MXR or Maestro like phaser on guitar that you would get it to do. But what it does is it's something awesome here. I'll, so let me just put this camera back and I'll show you what it's doing to the cure. Um, so this is with all the effects. There's no widener. So it's not doing a ton, actually. Yeah, so I... Th I guess. Well, actually, that's not true. It is doing quite a bit. It's like, it's just basically... So this phaser is a mono input and a stereo output. So it's sort of by phasing it and with the slight delays, which is how you do phase, um, is a, uh, it's just sort of making it sound like it's swirling. So this is with it. And then without the phaser, with the phaser, with the phaser and the H2000. There you go. <laughs> And that, I mean, that kind of just creates that swirling bed for everything to sort of lie on top of. I'd like to know, I mean, that's, um, I'm assuming that's my analog four synthesizer that I'm using for that, but I would like to know what I, what I was actually doing on my end, sending that out right now, but alas. Cure drone. Gotta keep, keep some secrets. Yep. Um, and then we have your roads, which, I mean, that was the mainstay on this record, and we reamped it through the Princeton, I believe. It says Rhodes amp but, here. Let's so I probably reamped it on every song. I think so, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you can hear also we added that um <clears throat> the tremolo. Yeah. Or vibrato. Is that from the Princeton? Yeah. Yeah. It on I mean I think I've said this on every single one we've done, but it has the nicest It's the nicest tremolo yeah, that, nicest trem. Oh, it's just gorgeous. And like I just love how when you dig into it, um the trem goes away and then as the note sustains it starts to trem again. I just like it's and it's not a speed thing. It's just a depth, but it's just it's so beautiful. Um, and this again, we actually ran out to the tape echo to one of the one of my tape echoes, which again probably was the Echoplex. Um, and it's just oh, kind of it's so nice that stereo feeling, you know. Yeah, it is nice, and it's in some ways like on those sustains, it kind of creates a flanger effect. Because they're sort of moving against each other. That's nice. It suits that aesthetic too. Yeah. Yeah. Or I guess it's not even a flange. So it's more of a chorusing thing. You know, the way they're actually moving up opposite each other. But I love it. Um, and I, I mean, honestly, the roads was such a big part of this whole record. And that's I'm really happy about that. This is the roads bass and drums. Just carries so much weight. <laughs> I should have those toms as the uh, sound when you text me. 
Uh, and then moving down here, it looks like we have a piano, which will be the CP70 uh, that you gave me. Um, it looks like we mic'd it up and also took a DI. And I'm pretty sure this is just like, oh yeah, that's the CP70, all right. Yeah, for sure. It's funny because I just, I, this is so vague to me. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Like, well, I, I, mean, I, I, I mean, I remember it just like I couldn't speak about it. Like, it's like. I, we just, I feel like we just kind of crafted a lot of this song here. And you yeah, heard that. Normally, think, normally you time those with snare hits, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little bit off my game. COVID's got me rusty, buddy. Uh, I think. I think we started shaping this song by taking the drums and the roads in this direction. And that started to inform the decisions that we made here, like adding that pulsing bass, adding the piano. The piano to me just adds like a little extra weight in those sections. Like it's not in these verses. You can see we you played it yeah, through yeah. the verses here, but we cut it out. So if you listen, you're, it's like it's pretty effective when it drops out. Nothing, you know, just the vocals. Classic trick always works. If it ain't broke, man. Um, so this is a combination of a DI coming straight out of the CP70. For people that don't know, uh, a CP70 is, well, I, I always describe it as like the equivalent of like an electric guitar to a piano. Um, it was designed as like one of the original portable stage pianos. I always say it's Jimmy Page and Elton John's touring, touring you know back from back in the day yeah and it's, it's and if people like that specific one i sometimes i go yeah yeah that's the one that one. um i think of the uh willie nelson and the family live album with him and the or is it yeah leon him and leon russell sitting at the bench of one but anyway it's like it's 300 pounds it comes apart in three pieces I, i'll just walk over there and show you actually i toured it i toured it last year i've toured it twice now i can't believe that you've toured with this fucking thing. so nuts insane. uh so this actually is one that Jonas gave me as a gift. Thanks, Jonas. Uh, You're welcome. Someone gave it to you as a parts piano, correct? Yeah. And I had some friends of mine who are engineers uh, fix it, which was... I love that piano so much, man. Yeah, it's, it's just like, I just feel like, I mean, probably like 75% of the songs in this record were... I composed on that piano. I mean, my mind in my studio, but that that model. Yeah. So for people that don't know, it has um, well, this only this is a short one off with a full eighty eight keys, but um, it has a full string board and pickups on each string, and so then you can you can take a DI from it. And then in this case, we actually open the top of it, which I can't do for you right now because I have some stuff on top of it. But uh, and then we put U eighty seven just sort of like, I think over just the range that you were playing and then, yeah. and then blended those. Um, and I can see, this is something, I, I mean, I've mixed quite a bit of stuff that's come out of Jonas's studio and it has a lot of CP70 on it. And this is something that I almost always put on it. This Waves uh, J37 plugin. And the reason I do that is I just like to add a tiny little bit of wow and flutter. And I find that this, it's subtle, but it just adds like a little bit of, I don't, I don't know if it's humanity or I just depth, I guess, to it. So, this is without it. And this is with it. It's pretty subtle. What I like about it is that it, the fact that it sort of warbles like that, it's slightly in and out of tune, slightly. I don't have to turn it up as much in the mix and it kind of comes out on its own. Yeah. I'm, uh, um, did you, I think, did you take my power supply for that? And then like, I never got it back because I've got, I don't think so. I, yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> and I've got 
my friend Brian is in the YouTube chat right now. He's just like, is that the one that I found the, the power cord for you? Because he ordered me one as a gift from Netherlands or something. What a guy. Probably Spain. Because the, there's a guy in Spain that makes spare parts for this thing. Anyways, he's, it's so funny. I haven't... It's so cool. Hey, Brian. Thanks again for that. Brian, Gab thank didn't you give me for back, that. Gab didn't give me back my power supply. So well, what, to, I think what actually happened is that I cut, you took it, you I cut the end off of it and soldered a new end on it. And then you gave me another Yamaha power supply that I still have to this day that I don't know what it's for. <laughs> I didn't do that, did I? You did. You did. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I ordered a sustain pedal for this piano, um, and it was from a, from a guy in Spain. It was like 300 bucks something They're i could have i could have mailed you one of those at a wood bud yeah that would have worked really <laughs> great <laughs> uh but yeah it's a cool instrument i i think my favorite thing about that instrument is the fact that you can open the lid and play in a house or a living room it's, and, a, it's a perfect volume yeah it's sing, per over. I, I sing and people can play guitar along and like yeah it, i yeah, love it i love it too for that for and that with stuff. the lid with the lid closed too it's like the perfect thing to just like put a pad of paper and like write a song at a perfect volume if you're by yourself yeah it's a cool instrument um highly recommend one for everyone they're, i also, also huge i also have this like i'm using a uh this aquarian uh h2a contact microphone on the actual um harp of the piano now and it's next level cp70 sound hmm. i'll look forward to hearing that one thing yeah. i've found I'm just going to say this for, for everyone is that the mics that you put on yours often have so much noise because you have to gain them up so loud. Yeah. Yeah. Um, because big, that, and that's another thing. I mean, the fact that they're just a perfect volume for an apartment is that's the exact reason because they're not loud. So you really have to like, you have to kind of jack them, mm -hmm. which I think I probably did here too. And then just did some noise reduction and committed it. Thank God for noise reduction. Uh, which we didn't use a lot of. <laughs> so there's one other thing with the piano. It's called piano dub, which I assume is probably some delay that we. <laughs> I don't even have. I have no recollection of doing that, but I love it. So I'm glad we did. Let's listen to that in yep. context. Oh yeah. Uh, oops. Sorry, buddy. Everybody crawl under a desk. I think my mouse is broken. <laughs> if that's what your mouse sounds like when it's broken. It's it's constantly double clicking on things you need when to get it's a new not mouse. supposed to. It's really annoying. We click on give, that mouse, give that mouse a piece of ease, bud. It needs it. It's clicked it's too many clicks. Uh yeah, anyway, that's the context. Sub bass, love it. Just adds a layer of thickness. Actually, that must have been Phil. That must have been Phil playing that because he would have had a sub fatty here. And I, at that point, I think I didn't have my sub fatty anymore. That was I was well, I never had one. It was just left here by some by a friend. But that could have also been done here <clears throat> potentially because I. Uh, I had we one. Have, I had one here, here for a couple of years too. I don't think we did that there. Yeah, I don't know that we would have actually because that thing that kind of sucked. I never used it. <laughs> <laughs> I miss it. I miss. It. I actually miss. It. I have a really good sub bass sound on my Electron now that totally like is fine for me. But that there's some. Me and Kaylee are always like, oh man, we'd like to have a sub fatty again. But it does have a really, really nice, cool, grainy sound. Here's it. It just feels nice to play too. And then Mogi. on this one, oh yes, of course. <laughs> Love this thing. That was nerdy. Oh yes, of course. Hits it pretty adding. hard. And then it's just adding a little bit of like sizzle to it. Yeah. 
I look on reverb every single day for one of these. <laughs> a real one. Yeah. Plug in? <laughs> yeah, for the plug in. Uh, but I mean, it's interesting. Like, that's on its own, objectively, it's fairly boring to listen to. But in the context of the song, it's so important. Yeah. Like, that's sub bass for you, though. That's like, yeah. Just feel it. That's gone now. That's I mean, massive. Yeah, that adds so much. And it, it really just like, it creates such a bed for everything else to lie, and it makes everything else feel so good. That would not be climbing the uh, Spotify editorial playlist if it didn't have that sub bass. No, you can't get away with shit without a sub bass these days. Uh, which brings us to Mr. Shabson. Uh, Joseph Shabson. And he's playing the saxophone all over this thing. Uh, tell us about that process, Jonas. Um, well, I've probably talked about it already at some point, but it's like uh, I basically sent five of the eight tracks of my record out to Joe to like play sax on. Well, first I, I sent it, I sent I Can Only Be Good. He played the most f- um, unbelievable, I don't know. I, like I still, every single time, that song to me is just his sax line. I just like, it's like, it's a per- for me, it's a perfect musical moment. And he did that for five songs. Like he just sent me these five, Just it just felt inspired. I just like, um, I can't wait yeah, he, for people to hear uh, his sax work on Heavy Nights. That's tough. that's coming out. Well, there's a video coming out for that tomorrow. Oh, really? I just watched it literally when you sent me the Zoom link. That's why I was late joining our Zoom chat. Yeah, it's so cool. Oh, I can't wait to see that. His his yeah. sax playing on. I mean, on every song, but that one's like it's just so unique sounding. Com- yeah, like yeah. It, I mean, it's just using the sax in such an unconventional way. It's interesting because I'm I'm hearing like the, some of the reviews coming from the record that people are trying to describe what that sound is, and they're and they're and they're wrong. You know, like thinking it's something else Those because idiots. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Truly, uh, what, what do they describe it as? A motorboat, uh, a chainsaw. No, just joking. <laughs> no, I don't know. Just like I don't know, synthesizer or something. Yeah, I, I, I mean, if I heard it in, out of context, I would probably guess that's a synth too. I wouldn't, but I've got pretty pretty good ears. So <laughs> no. Joe, Anyways, I, he he sent the, he sent all the, the sax through. He sent through. I, I think the other cool thing about working with him was that like he sent through like mixed versions of his sax and then the stems. And we did stem out a couple things. I know we stemmed at some moments on this record, but for the most part, what he sent is what we worked off of. His mixes of like, he, he, he do, he do two or three passes and then he'd do his favorite, like a mix down of his favorite you mean like moments. A comp, from the, a comp. A comp he'd, yeah. yeah. And then he would, he would give me the comp. And for the most part, we just worked off the comps. I know we stemmed yeah. a couple, there was a couple moments in, in something that we, that we stemmed. Maybe, maybe, uh, you and dreams or something, but, I think maybe this one also. Actually, I can yeah. see from the... Yeah, it looks like it, yeah. We did, yeah. Um, but, I mean, it was all there to work with. And it, I don't know, his tone is just so incredible here. So Reedy. Yeah. I saw that. Yeah, please. Oh, how old did you say Jem is? A year? <laughs> <laughs> you say. Yeah, that's a good sound. Uh, I, I feel like it probably didn't do very much to Joe's sax. It just sounded good. Let's I, think you, I think the sax always went through my purple 1176, right? Yeah. I see there's, the a, there's a note here. Purple, yeah. Purple MC seventy seven all buttons, all buttons in, yeah. and then just the attack pretty slow attack. All yeah. buttons in, shed those million nerds. <laughs> we should have invited everybody from there to this next one. We will, yeah. Um, yeah. All buttons in. That's the output. I mean, the output you just do to taste, uh, and then attack. I mean, I guess you do everything to taste. But we did a pretty slow attack, and then really fast release so it kind of added a little bit of extra sustain to what he's doing uh and then it is going it's going to the phaser 
and it looks like uh, the EMT 120 or F140. Sorry. Oh yeah, there's some heavy luck going on. That's not gonna get anybody laid. <laughs> so this is just the phaser. That's so cool. And then obviously, I'm pretty sure that's probably the. Um, let's see. Before I say anything. EMT140. Yes, that's the this guy. It's called the little plate. Their sound toys plugin. The sound toys plugins. Are I, so I love this. Good. And this I one love was, this plugin. It was free. Easy. They're giving it away. Um, it's a yeah. It's great. I I haven't been using it as much lately, but hearing this, I'm just like, why? Not? Speaking of free plate reverbs, the um, what's the other one that it wasn't acoustic, but it starts with an A. I don't know. Wasn't there an uh, instruments one? No, there's there is a. I, I, I'll look it up. Anyways, there was a there was a free one that was an EMT 140. Well, this is too. This isn't free anymore, though. No, no, no. But this this was a. Uh, it's not acoustica. It starts with the name. It's a, oh, it was. Oh, Arturia. you sent that to everybody. I sent that. it. I yeah. sent it. I sent it like in a group email, just to be like, "Hey, get yeah. this." One. That one, I that one, I like a lot. I never. I mean, did. this one, I, I still go, I use Little Plate all the time, but. Yeah, I if I'm going to use the one forty, I either use that or there's a good one in Altaverb. I think it's called Wendy Wendy Carlos's. EMP nice. 140 or something like that. I can't remember. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, that's the sax sound. No, no, no EQ at all. I mean, we're building. I mean, me and you are building plate reverbs too. That was a, that was supposed to be a COVID 19 lockdown thing, right? And we'll see. Maybe it will be. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> oh, God. Let's not talk about that. Let's not go there. There's so many things to talk about, actually. Uh, and then I guess that, I mean, that's it for the instruments, isn't it? What are you doing? I think other than that, we just have, I'm just going to mute the vocals here for a sec and see. Why are we still hearing the vocals? You maybe have a lyric change on this one. We did do a lyric change on this one. Oh! Let's see what's happening. Right, because actually, we should talk about that, because we, because, so we had already sort of designed the vocal sound for this record, sort of around the H3000, and when we recorded this vocal, you recorded this here, and we did all the effects real time, so you had them in your headphones to sing to. Do you remember that? Also, I think, wasn't Kaylee controlling the effects while I was singing? Yeah, Kaylee was controlling the prime time, which, I mean, um, I think, did I show the prime time? You could kind of see it below the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tide. I don't have to show it again, but it has this feature where you can actually, like, it's sort of, it's sort of like a, the precursor to, like, the freeze pedal, which is the electroharmonics thing. You can, you can just, like, freeze a note, essentially, and then you can uh, just mess with the timing of it. But it's not in, like, a traditional sense of, like, a... It doesn't. It doesn't sound like when you met timing of an analog delay repeating on itself, where it goes. You know, it's like you can cut that out too. Uh, it's <laughs> you'll you'll hear it. Um, actually, the prime time is a big part of Daniel and Wa's um, sort of electronic setup. With that, I think what thing. he does with that thing is incredible. It's pretty cool, and this is what Kaylee does with it. Let's see. <laughs> yeah, this is just a prime time. I'm just waiting on my break. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> She's getting a little heavy handed with it. I mean, that's just a cool sounding vocal through the oh, prime yeah. time. Just the actual treatment of the vocal sounds Just the delay, there. yeah. Okay. This is just the prime time again. Yeah, actually, the main my main incentive for for buying the prime time was um was that vocal sound, and it was actually a record that Len Wa did with Willie Nelson called Teatro. Do you know that record? Oh, of course, I know it yeah. from you. Yeah, yeah, of course. yeah. I've probably talked about yeah. it enough. 
but just his vocal sound on that record and it's that like sort of like slightly stereo um sound but it's i don't know something about that and actually soloing this because for the last like maybe two months i've been using the sound twice plugin because the prime time it works when it wants to and i had convinced myself that the plugin sounded as good as that but listening to that yeah, that's well like, there's a saturation going on like aside so from beautiful. the delay that's really really that's really so great. kind of well, what's pretty cozy sounding it's what's happening is we're actually listening to the fourth generation of the delay so there's you can set it so it's like well, fourth gen yeah. fourth gen tell you millennials one two four eight yeah exactly so it becomes a copy of a copy so four four gens later so you know it just starts to slowly um degrade essentially do you do you remember singing with all these effects? Did that affect your performance? Oh yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, I think that this the track was like such a like it needs. It would have been weird to just like sing it sterile because the track had a lot going on and like it's it's fun. Yeah. I mean, it's like a it's there's a performance aspect to this one more than like a lot of. I mean, most even him songs the performance aspect is like channel the sadness and like and then like go there and try and stay in tune while being emotional. Whereas this one was more about like trying to like match the energy level of, of certain things. So like, I think like Kaylee be manipulating those things and it feeling performative and stuff of like that just like made it feel exciting. Yeah. I also love the feeling that um, everybody in the room is involved in what's happening. Yeah. It's so amazing. Yeah. And like, and then, and then there's just like this energy pulse. It's, I mean, it's like being at a show, you know, it's like everybody, the no, audience it gives is meaning. Involved. Be, yeah. 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 Because it, it is, it's hard to perform as a vocalist with people sitting around. Just, you shouldn't have to do that. It's gr kind of gross. Unless, yeah. every, you know what I mean? I mean, it's like, it's kind of show off -y or something like that. Well, not even that. I mean, people want to feel like they're, they, they want to be there and be supportive. And I don't think it's take, it's nothing to do with the people that are there. It's just, it can feel, yeah, I don't know. Like sometimes I feel if I'm doing that, like I'm keeping people waiting or something. Whereas now everybody's involved and got a job. So everybody's excited and like, kind of cheering each other everybody on. wants to do more takes yeah that's the nice thing right yeah, like yeah, exactly it's like kaylee would have loved like another dozen passes to like finesse that and that's what's still so then the pressure's off kind of yeah it's super fun and so what we were tracking is we were I, I can't i actually can't remember what mic we used but i would guess the c38 which is this mic i'm using right now actually <laughs> which is what i used for the majority of the vocals on on the record that are well all of the vocals that were recorded at port william sound were done through that yeah and this one this one's mine belongs here but i think we probably did this uh i don't remember the preamp but probably through your la 2a and then it looks like we drove excuse me um an orban verb uh this chorus, which I guess is probably the, um, I don't know, it's mono. Oh, that's the 501. That's the RE501. So that's a chorus delay, actually. The H3000 and the prime time. The the uh, RE501 is the same. It's the mass-produced version of the 301. It says this. It's, um, but I was looking, I was looking at these last night. I need one. Yeah. Dude, there's no, I mean, honestly, just having just the chorus, it's uh, this thing. So well, this I was a, watching that Eric Valentine video. He was using that to emulate the um, the slap on something from that Marvin Gaye song. I oh, forget right. what now. Well, yeah. it's it's cool because it's very different. It's a very different sound than the like Echoplex. Because you can, I mean, there's it. There's um, there's three reproduce reproduce heads, so you can kind of create. You can pick between. It's the same thing as a space echo. You can have head one, head two, head three, and then you can time the speed of the tape, which actually allows you to fine tune the delay. But then you can use a combination of the heads, so then you can get like a super tight, like almost like a sixteenth and a quarter delay at the same time, and it becomes this like sort of fluttery thing that can take off. It's pretty cool. So this is anyway. This is so there's the Orban, the chorus, the H three thousand, which is that spreader, and you can see here. I'm actually um, this is the H three thousand print track which is an even tied box. I'm compressing that and also EQ because that essentially kind of became the lead vocal. Like this is it. This Leave is... me long grass. And I'm not going without the H3000. Wow. 
Oh uh, yeah. So it's it's carrying a lot of the weight. So I'll mention it again because I mentioned in the last video and actually I had some people uh, reach out to me about it. Um, that I was using the the Sound Toys Micro Shift as like my yeah. plugin on my vocals for most of tracking. Um, I wasn't tracking with it on because it, it it's like it does a weird thing with tuning. It's kind of hard to sing and key properly, but um, uh, but uh, yeah, I would apply it afterwards, and that that kind of like was like most of the demos you would have heard, Gav, or like uh, the initial kind of rough mix as I said it would have had a micro shift on, which is like emulating what the H three thousand is doing. Yeah, and I mean that sort of set the tone. That's I mean that's such a, such a cool thing when you have like we were talking about before. It's just like a clear parameter within which to work. It's like, okay, this is our plan. This is what the vocal sound is going to be. And so now everything else has to fit around that. Yeah. You know, which, I mean, it's very easy to start. Uh, like, there's always so many drum tracks. So you think, I need to dive into the drums first because there's so many of them. I need to wrangle this. And then you spend so much time focusing on them that you forget about how important the vocal is. And in this case, we like had this like, it's kind of a, I mean, it's kind of a giant vocal sound. Like, here it is again. Leave me alone, grass. I'm not going home now. So everything else had to fit around that, which, I mean, that's what's selling the song, too, you know? I mean, that and the Tom fills. <laughs> no, it's true. I think that an interesting thing about a vocal like this from, like, a um, performance point of view or something is that, like, this is a weird one because it's like the song is so energetic yet the vocal still is kind of reserved and it couldn't like it would have been obnoxious to sing it out. So there's a weird, I think the effect is doing the effect is adding energy to the performance that the performance can't really do because it would be obnoxious. Does that make any sense? Like, yeah. like, the, like there, there's so much character with the effect on the vocal that it's also lifting weight that, that the vocal shouldn't do because if, if you if like if if the vocal was like that out and It'd like if the vocal was big it would be cheesy so it's yeah. like the vocal still kind of restraint but the effect is adding that is making up that energy i don't know if that's getting a little bit too kind of abstract no but. i don't think so i mean you're kind of following in, in that sentiment you're following in the footsteps of like joy division you know or the national where it's yeah. like this music is fairly heavy and these vocals are i mean not all their vocals are like that obviously yeah. songs are they freak out but like a lot of the Joy Division vocals are that monotone, under underplayed. Kind yeah, of, yeah, which gives it that sense of like foreboding, danger, cool. You know, like listen to like the Passenger by Iggy Pop. You know, just like it's so I will. subdued. Uh, but the energy is yeah. But the energy is it, it's just like it's it's that restraint. I guess is what I'm talking about. I feel like that's another record that. Oh no, the idiot. I guess is a record we talked about. With yeah. Kaylee, when Kaylee was in the studio, I think you guys had like I don't know if it was on this song in particular, but just like might have been you guys, yeah, yeah. They, I mean, those two records, Lust for Life and Idiot, I just love. I think I like uh, the Idiot even more, but the song Passenger is just so good. I wish yeah. I could listen to it all day. Uh, but yeah, we definitely had conversations about that. I kind of forgot about that. Um, yeah, and so that's the vocal. Well, I mean, actually, I mean, that's not, that's not the vocal. There's tons of other stuff. Um, th again, I'm using that sort of same chain I was using before. So this is just the dry vocal, which is feeding this track, which is going through an 1176, my 1176 hardware insert. And that's going straight to a vocal aux bus. Um, so uh, normally, this vocal aux bus I'm showing here, here would feed the um, H3000 on all the reverbs and stuff because I, if I, it, in the case that I hadn't backed the vocal um, and I wanted to add those things. So the other effects that I put on pre the final vocal aux would all apply to those. And in this case, they didn't, which is why I added that LA2A and a little bit of um, EQ to the H3000. Um, and so this vocal is also feeding uh, a Fairchild plugin. Um, and it's not compressed. It's just kind of for color, and again, it's going. I think I'll go over this quickly because we talked about this last time. Um, vocal guitar amp, which I just love this plugin. Um, sometimes I will actually track a live amp with the vocalist. We didn't do that on on this one, but and then this is sort of like an 
this, I stole this from Magic Chips. Uh, it's like an early incarnation of a multiband compressor. So what's happening is um, cutting all the low end, boosting all the high end. Uh, and then I'm compressing the shit out of that. Well, not the shit, but I'm compressing quite a bit. And then I'm basically doing the reverse and cutting uh, all the high end and boosting all the low end. After the after that compressor. After the compressor. So you're just basically, in a sense, kind of picking what frequencies the compressor is going to compress and then making them up again afterwards. So it's sort of like a mid to high, high mid-range compressor. And what I find it does, it just like, it allows me to bring out some bite and brightness in a vocal um, that's quite compressed. It doesn't get harsh. And I, that's cool. I've never tried that. That's cool. Yeah. It, I mean, it does, it does a lot in this song. It's not as drastic because a lot of the vocal sound is coming from the H3000. So, uh, like if I took, if we just listen. So, to so, so you're, you're boosting the high, you're rolling the low. So the lows aren't really hitting the compressor, the LA2A. Yeah. The LA2A is then taking the boosted highs and, and like crushing those down a little bit. And then behind that compressor, you're bringing those, the, the low end back up. Yep. And you're knocking the high end down. So you kind of decibel wise, you're probably like trying staying to, somewhat the same, right? Trying to, trying to create like sort of a flat, flat curve, but you end up compressing that high range. And it, honestly, what it really does, at least how I have it set, is it just brings up this like, it's almost like, oh, I want a little bit more like interesting, nice, high mid range. And I just take the fader and, and I just turn that one up, you know? That's, that's very cool. It's cool. And it, the other thing, I keep saying honestly, I'm not lying about anything. Uh, <laughs> the other thing I find it does, it, it makes, um, it adds a bit of clarity to the vocal in terms of just the enunciation and the understanding of actual uh, lyrics without without it being super bright or obvious. So this is just the vocal without those other effects. Leave me in the long grass. Shiki. I'm not going home now. Yeah, this this is not a good example of that because, like I said, so much of it is it's the Orban. Actually, it sounds. Hold on a sec. It actually sounds like we're mostly using the. I don't know. There's the delay in chorus. Again, such a cool <coughs> sound. Uh, so yeah, that's that's the whole vocal sound. You want anything to that, Jonas? I don't think so. Like, I feel like when I think back to the demo, it's like, again, this is like a more refined version of it because the demo is just like kind of delay and like, um, Oh, speaking of that delay, there is one other thing here we did here. Let's listen to this. Uh, oh, we must've just did one pass of the, Dub delay and then add it. It's pretty subtle. I find that part so effective. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And I mean, the nice thing about you can do all that stuff like digital delays or plug-in delays and automating them, but I, I just, I find that cumber quite cumbersome. Just like trying to automate like a delay feedback. So what we did was we just did a couple passes of delays on the, again, the Echoplex. So you're playing it live, listening to the track, recorded that in, and then you can see we sort of moved it around, added a little bit of a fade. Once it becomes just an audio file, it's so malleable. And I just love that. I just, I just find that so much more intuitive to work with. And you can, and again, there's like so many different ways to skin a cat, but, uh, Whoa. sorry, <laughs> but it's true. Uh, and then there's I, a, I wouldn't know. <laughs> there's a ton of backup vocals here too. So th these harmonies, you can see here they um, they went. I'll be back in one sec. Keep going. Okay. Yeah, they kind of went through the same process actually as the other vocals. Let me just have a look here. Sorry if I'm losing anybody on this. I lied. So what's happening with this is that I recorded through the same chain with a different mic, uh, with the Orban, the chorus, the H3000, the prime time, and I've just completely changed the balance. And you can hear there's not a ton of the widening. There's no chorus. 
just a tiny bit of prime time. Uh, in the context, it sounds like this. I mean, part of it, actually, what, uh, Jonas, what you, oh, there's that huge, oh. uh, <laughs> what you and I kind of did with the backup vocals is actually, uh, in this context, I sort of use them to drive effects and the effects are more what you hear. So you almost get this like multi-layered version of the vocal. Does that make sense? No. So, I mean, the, and my, the, the reason I started doing and thinking of this, so I was reading an article about why slapback sounded so different on early like, 50s recordings. And it was because maybe it was not even 50s. Yeah, it was in 50s. Uh, they didn't have these aux, all the aux sends. So what they would do instead of having one mic, your vocal mic, trigger all your effects, they would have your mic set up and then maybe another mic that would be driving a guitar amp that would that would have a delay in the line or something. So it just has a different quality and it added sort of just this depth to the vocal. And so in this case, the backup vocal, we're not really hearing the dry vocal, we're hearing the effect of it. And so we're just getting this multi-layered effect that just makes the vocal suddenly get this much deeper on that plane. I feel like this is this song is such a beast for for mixing because there's so much of that going on. Like it feels like there's just like this, once it gets going, there's just a sound world that's happening constantly in this one that like, like along with that becomes all these opportunities for like, uh, I don't know, weird, dissonant frequencies and like mm -hmm. i don't know just like a lot of weird anomalies and and for some reason this one just kind of like well i know the reason is because you're a great mix engineer but just like i think just like it being able to like ride all of that craziness that's happening at all times and uh i think it adds to the energy all that analog noise and all the weird glitchy stuff that's ha like when i say glitchy I just mean like all the weird kind of anomalies that come with all that gear. It's like, I feel like once it gets going, it's just like you're, we're riding this, oh, yeah. this wave and it's adding energy yeah. like on the, on the ride. I agree. And it, I mean, honestly, some of those, like some of those stereo uh, detuned delays that at sometimes they do sound glitchy when you listen to them. They're like, they're like almost like correcting the timing. They're just, For this the one, delay it ends and it's like, what like, the fuck's happening? Yeah. But I mean, that, that it is what I love about it. And I think we did it in such a way that like there was clear elements that are like the lead elements, even though those have delay on them too. I mean, I think that's an important maybe distinction to make um, is like the difference between delay and reverb, just in the sense that we didn't use, there is reverb, but it's a lot of delays and the delays are short and they're not super cloudy sounding. And so we did, sort of stayed away from getting bogged down in, in a sort of amalgamation of a reverb cloud essentially where yeah. low frequencies can kind of build up um like, like, like a good example of that was that um neve um, non-linear reverb that we used super short super effective and so it gets in it gets it done and it's distinctive and and you don't really know that it's a reverb well i think that's what's happening uh, yeah it's like it's not like you're running one reverb like an like a plug-in it's not like you have little plate sitting on one bus that you send everything through and so it just builds up this like oh, yeah. guck. No, there's a million <laughs> reverbs and delays. Yeah. But everything's being everything's being served in this like you in it's this unique manner where it's like yes. individual. Yeah. You know? So exactly. there's there it still exists in a space, which is really cool. Yeah. I'm, awesome. I'm glad to hear that because I that's what I'm going for. Um so mm -hmm. then we have a bunch of cases. And that's a lot of work. That's a lot you it, like you, you put a lot of work like, well, you can see these vocals are being malted out and printed through all of these things, right? Like that's yeah, yeah. And a lot. You could just put plugins on all of them and it would be done. But this is like, it's a lot of recall and a lot of, yeah, a lot of, yeah. Anyways, it's just a lot of work, but it works. Well, and I think what's, again, th these are all printed. So then it's like, I can easily see exactly which one is. I can solo them. Like the thing that Pro Tools doesn't have that Logic has you know, you can solo your reverb channel and hear exactly what's going to the reverb and what it sounds like. You can't, yeah. you can't do that in Pro Tools. Um, so this is nice because then I have the option of just soloing chorus and I can hear exactly what was happening like on a console. It's a, basically a return. And then I can also manipulate it. And the, I mean, the thing I think that is important to note here was that even though we tracked all those effects and they're all in the session, we didn't always use them. You know, like, I mean, I look here and see the Orban track 
and it's completely muted. Yeah. Um, and the chorus track, unless there's automation on it, which there is, it looks like actually. Oh, it's that's not actually that's uh that's overall automation. That's a VCA automation. So there's no automation on on the course. So the course is muted also. So just because we printed it doesn't mean we even need to use it. Which I think yeah. is an important thing to remember. Yeah. And even with overdubs and stuff, you don't always have to use everything. Um and no, so, do, oh, well let's say we should did you watch all of that Marvin Gaye thing today? No, I haven't finished it yet. Okay, well, I well there's the like piano part though. Is that what you didn't talk about? Yeah, the piano part. There's like on on what's going on that Marvin Gaye song. It's like there's like a there's a piano part that just like in the multi tracks just got muted. It never got it was never in the final mix, and I just think that that's so cool. You know, like yeah, that you someone's willing to like what are the sorry to use another uh, metaphor here or analogy, but like they always say that great authors are willing to murder their children. I mean metaphorically so, speaking you so know. Vi- metaphor is so violent with gaps though. yeah i know but i mean yeah. in their literature it's like just because these things are important to the character in the story or it was important to someone in as an overdub or you spent so much time on something if it doesn't serve the song then you have yeah, to get rid, get rid of it, of it. Yeah, you know yeah. but that takes and then there's like all this ego under- there's a lot of ego connected to that too yeah and i think Often. i think i think that also is sometimes why it's beneficial to have somebody mix it or not there every day you know like when these came in well this is not a great example because we did track these vocals here but you know sometimes i'll get projects to mix and i don't know i don't know the conversation that people had about the overdubs and i sort of don't care at first at least my like for my artistic expression of it i don't care and then you have to backtrack sometimes to to look at that and understand where people were coming from and also maybe sometimes your interpretation was different than the artists that happens too but i just think having that unique perspective of being able to not know the egos is important well yeah because then you just kind of go like this that, this part is not making the song stronger so like let's mute it yeah i mean i i always love it. i mean i don't i i love it i know that like that that guitar riff the outro riff on the song was something that I had in my version that I, w- I was like, it's doing something rhythmic that I really like it. Which I really liked which, it. And I remember you didn't you didn't like it. And then we is, eventually, which, I don't know if it's the... Uh, is that the part that Simon played? That, yeah, and yeah, then we I didn't ended like up it finding first. a home for it. I know you didn't like it. You were like, it's too much. And then we put through the wow pedal. Yeah. And now I was trying to like just continue to like really amplify the polyrhythm, like the yeah. groove kind of. Let me find that. And that's a good example too. It's like if someone's, so if you're really passionate about it, and you have to fight for your ideas. And I think it's okay to have those disagreements. And I think it's an important part of the artistic artistic process of it. You know. I think it says it says something about mixing, like being there to mix, like yeah. with you, because you would that this mix would have that would have been muted. It probably and I, been, but I love and it I, now, you know. Exactly, I know that's what I mean. It was like nice that like we actually like that. <laughs> there, there was the the whole mixing process was still very collaborative and creative because of that. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely, and that's something that, yeah, like you said, it's just you can't you can't have if you're not there together having the conversation about it. Um, but I think there's multiple times where like you convinced me of stuff that I wasn't feeling and vice versa. It didn't convince it wasn't like we arm wrestled about it, but it was just kinda like it was like, Well, what if we like we just found ways to like make each other's ideas work for each other, you yeah. know? Which yeah. was cool in a really positive way, like not in like a argumentative way, but just in like And a, not even in like a compromise, I don't think, kind of way. I think yeah, yeah. I, I think just actually working to working towards it and sometimes you, like you just don't necessarily hear it the way someone's hearing it yet you know and it takes time yeah i was having this conversation with somebody yesterday actually how difficult it is to describe music in words you know that's why you have music like you know you can't you can't describe everything in words because the, the vocabulary of language is different than the vocabulary of music so, yeah, it's not so easy all the time. Um, Couldn't agree with you more on that. Yeah, I don't know 
where I was going with that exactly. But... Well, I know. I mean, it's like, that's like we can talk about that for another two hours too. Yeah, I mean, that's the reason you have music, you know. That's the reason why we we are doing this. Yeah, and that's why that's the reason why, you know, sp- sp- Spanish poetry conveys different emotions than English poetry. You know, and despite you can translate Spanish poetry into English, but you don't you you don't get the same thing out of it. Yeah. I don't know why I picked Spanish, but I just love Pablo Neruda, so that's probably why. Uh, so at this point, it looks like we just have backup vocals to chat. Well, and then effects, but which there's a lot of. So that's all Kaylee there. That's going to be pretty yeah. cool. It's freezing. She has such an amazing voice. Uh, and then so she kind of is building and then I think it looks like Simon sang on it too Are you the new way? oh yeah <laughs> I can't believe what you do to me I remember this well I got it bad in a good way so nice together is this a good dream or am I finally waking up Whew. That sounds so good. Let's just listen to that yeah. on his own. No way. I can't believe what you do to me. I've got much. it bad in a good way. Is this a good dream? Or am I finally waking up? <laughs> That's, the one who loves That's the part he was born to sing. Oh, yeah. It sounds great. Uh, and so we're not doing, I mean, I'm compressing it a little bit with this uh, SSL channel, which is something that I, I just love how it, this thing has kind of everything in one spot really easily to access. And it does a good job of a lot of things. And then if you can't find it here, you can find it somewhere else. But it's just like here we're using the compressor. Uh, I'm using the high, high and low pass filters, which actually listening to this, I'm like, maybe I should have used a little bit less of the uh, low pass, but whatever. Uh, and then a little bit of EQ, you know, and it's all in one spot and it sounds great. So this is without it. Oops, I want to zoom here. Play for me, please. No way. I can't believe what you do to me. Kind of just muffling it and making it a bit reedier. Kind of giving it a ribbon mic sort of sound. Yeah. But you must compress that pretty heavily going in. I can just hear it and also you can see it here. Yeah, but it sounds awesome, and it's going it's going to BX twenty, and uh, to mention D, which is the Roland chorus box, more chorus. I just had Simon, but it adds so much. Is the cannon <laughs> on its own that uh, Buenos Pizzas is a little bit gross sounding it's like an octopus in your background oh, I love that so much cool so yeah that's I mean that's everything that's going on there, we, we can go over the effects real quick here um, so I, I just have a bunch of sends um, that we were using just to run through them, uh, the Dimension D is a Bucket Brigade chorus. It's a an- well, it's not analog. It, it is analog. Sorry, it's a, not a plugin, is what I meant to say. But the plugin version sounds good. I'll just show you here. Can you see that? Yep. Yeah. Top box there, and below that is that three thousand. Um, and then jet going back to the Pro Tools, it looks like we. Oh, I kind of went over the Echoplex. These things are actually just sends that I use to print things back in. That's the RE501. This is that prime time we were talking about. Phaser, H- we, we went over all this. H3000, Spring Reverb. Uh, the Spring Reverb, even though I, I have 
the Orban, and I also have a great Furman spring reverb. What's this one going to be? This is, oh, yes. I, I like the weird, it's like a, a super reverb, just a, like a silver face fender spring tank. Has a really weird tail. It, like it, it goes on for a bit of time, and you think someone's talking after you. But it's cool. I love how the phaser's still just there doing its thing. Right <laughs> I know. <I'm, laughs> yeah, let's see what that sounds like if I crank it. Minus eight point five. <laughs> yeah. Just skiing, just out in the slopes. Yeah, that is very peaceful. Sounds like every uh, every Atari game I ever played. Yeah, they were probably made it by Eventide. Uh, yeah, that thing, it's set to, you can use it in, there's, a, there's four different modes, and so one of them is the oscillator, so it, and you can just control the speed of the oscillator and the depth, and so that, that's the oscillator, just, and what that means also is that every single time you play this mix, it's gonna, that's gonna be different, so, like, every time we printed a mix, it's slightly different, especially, and that mostly is that the cure, not the cure, the core, uh, yeah. synth part. Which I, it's cool, you know. It's like it's that it means it's alive, um, and sometimes it's not as cool. H three thousand spring tank AMS for we went over plate we went over BX twenty we didn't look at, but that's again this is before I had the BX twenty. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna actually I forgot to buy that off. Uh, this is a this is actually the twenty two I think uh, maybe his <laughs> I'm fast up with this guy. I, I love the pictures just like up on some dude's desk. <laughs> Those things are, that must be a strong desk because those things are fucking heavy, heavy yeah. man. And you can see he's got like a Dell uh, yeah. desktop there. This is probably just like the stock. Yeah, I don't think I did anything. Now I usually EQ them a bit, but th this is a, this Altiverb is, it's cool. Uh, and then I have this, just a parallel bus happening, just a tiny bit of verb. Or sorry, verb. What's Compressor. hitting that? Like everything but the vocals. Everything the drums. This is with it. Is it? Yeah, massive. Yeah, it's doing a lot of like, it's doing a lot of like the dynamic. Um, it's also bringing things just like up, but it just means that like the loudest things are also dropping other things. When the vocals hit, the back of vocals will will get crushed a little bit, you know. Yeah. Because everything's getting pushed into it at the same time. And so the loudest thing will cause it to compress the most, which means it will remain the loudest, but those other things will dip with it. And then Do that's you... actually getting EQ'd on the on the warp deck pretty heavily on this one. Sorry. Are you sorry, I was just gonna say, do you because I, I, I use this this trick like with an SSL bus comp on my rear bus for the exact same thing. Yeah. Often it's like in my kind of template for mixing. And and I and for upbeat stuff like this it's great for like more acoustic organic stuff it's like not not so it gets a bit cloudy or something it's a bit weird kind of but do you ever find that when you're doing this on the rear bus that you're adding anything else to that channel at all or do you just use it for um on that rear bus have you ever added anything other than 1176 or an ssl bus comp or something like that for the rear bus no and it's i mean this is a super it's a dangerous it's kind of dangerous territory i guess yeah and this is set i mean this is a two to one ratio and yeah, the attack so is as slow as it will go, so it's never. But you like hear, but it's like I hear it. I hear it. I find it it's really drastic in a positive way. Oh, it's super drastic. But what's you're not here, like because the attack is so slow, it's never grabbing any transient things, and so it's sort of making everything just feel a little fatter. Like it has a little bit more sustain. Yeah, you know, a bit of sparkle or something like that, or like a bit of energy. Like I don't know. There's yeah. there's something. The one I, thing, I that, honestly, the one thing that I struggle with the most with this or whatever you call it is um you have, i have to really be conscious of the delay compensation in pro tools because suddenly you can be sending things around too many different ways yeah and then you get phasing issues and, it, and you don't notice it until suddenly you're like why does my mix suck and is this is this something that you are applying the very beginning of the mix stage like busting everything but your drums over and it's there and then you're just like maybe playing with the settings on it as the mix develops kind of uh i'm not usually playing with the settings on it at all okay i don't either i kind of mine's kind of i have a, I have a preset on mine that i just like it lives there and then I, I i i play with how much i send to it or sorry i play with the fader of it and that's it i don't even do that the fader is is a uh, post these faders are po all post fader so 
the actual fader on the channel just if I turn the vocal up, it sends more vocal to it. Yeah, um, interesting. And so it just sort of lives there. I will go and check it and see what it's doing. And like I said, in this case, I actually went and cleared out um, some of the low end on the actual analog, like on the Warbeck uh, EQ. Um, and there has been a few times where I've taken it off and been like, this is better without this at all. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Me too, 100%. And so it's, it is important to go back and check. And you can see it's not like, it's not at zero. I have this set so that I can I have a control function. So what happens is things actually set sent to this fader, and then they get sent to the compressor, and then this compressor gets sent out to the word back, which where it gets summed back in with everything else. And this just allows me to have, like, if I want overall just, like, less compression driving this, this um, compressor, it's an easy way to do it because I find the sweet spot on this thing is actually kind of tricky on the plugin. So if I just actually set, I sort of leave that and then I just use a fader to send more or less to it. Oh, so you're sorry. You're okay. That's right. So you're sending it post fader in my, in my case, um, I'm busing like a hundred percent of all of my tracks, but the drums to it. And I pull the fader all the way down and then I just bring it back up for that energy. Like I just oh, bring wow. the fader up until the energy feels interesting to me on each channel. Yeah, like I'll send everything to it. Ah. Well, not. I mean, sometimes I'll take things out if I feel like they're not going to work with it. But and then I'm just like, and then I have a I have a setting on my SSL bus compressor that like stays pretty 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 static. And then yeah, I'll just bring that fader up. Right. Um, so so oftentimes it's something that I do later in the mix stage. But. Okay, that's pretty different than how I use it then because this yeah, yeah, is on. Yeah, of course. From that's why I was asking. Yeah, it's not from the get go. And then, like, as if I bring the vocal fader up, it like I'm hearing, like it's not like I'm hearing one dB of going up. It's like it's going up there, and it's going up to the rear bus. It's going up to another sure. parallel compressor. It's going so each move, I'm hearing that effect, and I'm hearing how it's affecting the other things. Yeah. So it it kind of just becomes like like sort of part of this sort of sound. every sound that goes to it kind of yeah which I mean yeah in reading some of the initial reviews of the record talking about like the syrupy or molasses like how thick everything is which yeah. is partially how you played it and partially how we mix it you know we just enhance that yeah and I think a lot of it's coming from that sort of parallel compression like making everything just like have a little bit more sustain a little bit more of that like f sort of depth and fat fatness I guess would be the word. yeah thick yeah thickness. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, that contributes quite a bit to it. And like even listening to it with it. I think it's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It just, it's like there is a slight bit more clarity without it maybe, but I it doesn't have the same. Like it almost sounds like a, if I told you one was to tape and one was not, you probably believe that. Or I would, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because it sort of adds like it's, well, that's what it's doing. It's compressing things. But we're really not like losing the, the energy or the transient because we're it's parallel compression, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we're still getting all that stuff. I I love it. I love using it as as like a technique in the studio. But like hearing it right now, I'm just like shit. It's like adding it's something so, really it's cool. Adding so much, it's great. Yeah, I'm impressed. That's cool to talk about that. Yeah, and I mean that's tons of people do that. And when I like mixing with John Agnello, he he used parallel compression on so much stuff you know and the, the the i mean the cool thing about plugins is that you can do that right in in it you know like there's like yeah. a knob that you can actually do it in this case it's interesting because it's not parallel compression on one element it's it's multiple elements compressing and affecting each other so it's almost like a bus compressor except that it's parallel yeah yeah and I t you know it took me a long time not a long time it took me a while i guess though to really understand what the idea of parallel compression is and it's really just that the compressed signal and the dry signal are traveling to the mix bus together you know and so you and you can control how much of each one you want but both of them are going I that's yeah i always find that so i always find that like as a weird thing to just like if i have people working in the studio that like sometimes i'll give people like a the kind of a logic 101 set and stuff like that and or like friends that are just like maybe getting a DAW for the first time and trying to explain it I'm always just like, it's always a, it's always kind of a weird thing to explain, but it makes sense to me at this point. It's like, I don't know. It's well, it didn't it, and it didn't originally, but it's it's like, very similar to a dry wet knob, or it is this. It's the same exactly thing exactly. As a dry wet it's knob the exact on a, same thing. Reverb, yeah, yeah, you know, it's like 
how much yeah. of the original signal do you want versus how much of the compressed signal you want and like yeah. in the case of the bass on this song we are only hearing the bass from the rear bus compressor yeah and also i lied that's amazing that's not entirely true there is also no that is true hold on a sec <laughs> It's going to a drum. It's going to the drum compressor. So it's going to a parallel drum compressor, and it's going to the rear bus compressor. So that means the bass. And you, the bass sounds. I gotta. I'm gonna start doing this more often. Actually, I'll, I'll put the bass in here. I'll play it for you. So this is first. It'll be just parallel, and then I'll put the bass in. A little more obvious off the top here. So this is in. That's out. So yeah, it just feels like so much flatter. It's way rounder too, in a yeah. cool way. At the end, it's kind of hard to tell because it's there's so much shit going on. And at the end, I'm like, actually, it sounds pretty good with it in. Uh, yeah, but that was, I mean, and that's, you know, that probably was a, an accident. And, but what it would have been like, those. but yeah, it wouldn't have been an accident where it was like at the end of the session. And I was like, oh, I, I just turned off the bass by accident. Oh, I like it. No, but, it happened early on and we were just and like, I'd be pushing, embrace it. I would be, well, and I would have been also like cranking the fader up on the channel, which would be driving the parallel compression harder. Yeah. Because if it was, if that, if this was on. So I'm just basically I'm just assigning the track to the to the master or the mix bus. That's on. I would have just brought this down. But, yeah. However, that's a very different sound. It's a very different sound because if I turn that fader down, then it's driving the parallel compressors a lot less, which is not only affecting the sound of the bass but also affecting the sound of everything else. Yeah. So that's the thing I like about using parallel because it's like, I also, it's like you, whatever you have on that, um, like that compressor, you can just like be super aggressive with it and only send so much to it and play with just like with a fader play against, I guess it's like against like a wet dry knob. I don't, it, it, yeah. it's silly now that plugins don't have, I mean, every plugin should just have a wet dry knob. It like saves a lot of routing and stuff, but. Yeah, but it's not the same because in this case, it's like you're sending multiple things to it because if a, dry, a wet dry knob would allow you just to drop the plugin on the bass and if you want the bass to be in parallel, you just adjust the dry Yeah, knob. whereas you, you can create what's happening is your parallel effect and, it's and that's the sound also. and then you can send other, uh, you can send multiple elements to it exactly. and choose how much of them get that that kind of treatment. And they interact, though, is what I'm saying, right? It's like, so the bass is going to that compressor. So if I, if I sh like, for example, we could easily, we're getting a little nerdy here, but that's fine. This whole thing is nerdy. So this is the parallel compressor. If the bass is soloed, then the bass is the only thing driving this compressor. So it's hardly compressing. Yeah. But if I unmute it, it's not compressing a lot, but it's compressing a lot more. The needle's not moving yeah. at all now, you know? Yeah. Well, that's, so yeah, everything that's, that's hitting is kind section. of being being glued glued together. Yeah, so what I guess what I'm saying is like here, so bass on its own. Bass with everything else in. Suddenly you're looking at, you know, like 3D of compression as opposed to no compression. And that's everything that's going to that channel getting compressed that much. And so yeah. it just means that whatever the loudest element is, is causing, well, the sum of the instruments, but the loudest instrument is triggering it the most. And then everything is being squished down together. And then you bring in that. And like back being in. squished together and coming out of there too. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Which is that that's the difference between using the dry and wet thing. So. Yeah, 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 no, no, that's a great, that's a great point. I, I think that that's 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 awesome, and I, I think it's a great indication of like a, I don't know a technique that's like this song, like 
obviously if that was turned off nobody would be like oh it did it doesn't work but it's just like one of those elements adds another couple percent of like energy or excitement or like well and it made our job easier because we would i mean i would have wanted it to sound the way it sounds and so we had to figure out another another way to do that the the thing that you have to be careful with with parallel compression is like you have to really hear what it's doing to everything and essentially it's the same thing as a bus bus compressor in that sense because i i've received mixes to master with the compressor without the compressor with limiters on and i usually think okay well i'm probably going to want to just use the the mix with the compressor at least and sometimes maybe with a little bit of limiting but there's been a few occasions where i just checked it and i realized actually this is pumping in just the wrong wrong way you know and so instead of like the snare drums cutting through and everything kind of like getting smushy in a beautiful musical way they can suck everything in do you know what i mean yeah, no, of course. I don't, yeah. have, I don't have a good example to pull up because I don't want it ever to sound like. I think that, that like <laughs> I'm doing it. I'm doing it in a different way, and it's like, and, and it sounds like your way is like a more. I mean, you're mixing into it, which is like a thing that I always try and do with any hardware that I'm using in the studio. But it's like that. That's kind of like what I'm doing with with the faders. Like when as I, I'm like bringing it up and just being like, here, listening to like where it gets to a point where I'm like, this is adding something nice. It's not taking away. It's not. I mean, it's like it's yeah. it's a broader stroke. Obviously, it's not as controlled as what you're. The way that you're applying the same thing but no these are broad strokes too and i mean as i was saying the wet dry knob thing like here is an example this is on the Hello. Mix, this is on the mix bus um and this is a it's in parallel because i'm using about that's probably 60 60 percent of it so here it is so this is the setting it's on harder time hearing that one yeah it's not doing a ton right now because i mean yeah. but it will it will be yeah what's it and so i mean that's now doing a ton and i think doing a ton in a really exciting way and this is where I might, I might argue. I might argue with you that. I almost like it better with it off there. Well, it's just louder with it off. <laughs> is, that, is that all that's happening? Yeah. it's. I mean, it's not just louder. But if you listen, don't, I mean, the excitement for me, what's happening, the, vol, the volume thing you have to just kind of ignore, I guess. But yeah. uh, the compression, what's happening is it's making it move and pump so that it's actually like alive. I hear fun. that. I hear that for sure. And I think for me, what I'm looking for, in that case is I, I want that feeling to create depth and the way that I think we talked about this before like the human ear kind of hears depth as a survival thing so it's like if something is this far away or if it's this loud it's this far away if it's this loud it's that far away you know and so as this is pumping and moving the whole thing suddenly feels like it's alive and you can see the meters here just bouncing <laughs> To me, with them, it's still, it's still exciting. Don't get me wrong. It just feels flatter. It just yeah, feels like I, this I, is this is the wall. Like not that this is a wall of sound, but it just feels like this music exists on this plane. And when yeah. that's happening, it's like suddenly, like it's it's moving towards you and further away from you, and it's exciting. And like yeah. I do agree with you. Like, and I think that's like the uh, Fletcher Munson Munson curve. Like the human ear just perceives loudness as better, which is no. Not I the get case. I. I don't for me for me it sounds it's not for me it sounds like it's slightly wider with, with this it, off with it on or off with it off that's interesting let's see like it's kind of like it focuses it it's like it I think that might just be a volume thing. Let me, let's see here. It could be, it could very well be. I 
I mean, what's tricky about that is that the, the volume that this is at. No, I know, I know, I know. It's feeding the next thing in, in line. But I mean, maybe, you know, those, those are sometimes sacrifices that you got to make. <laughs> I, I mean, I love it. I love yeah. it. But it's just interesting to hear that because it's like, I definitely feel like, I, I mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't choose one or the other because it's like, or I said I would choose one over the other because it's like, like what, what it being on does to that kind of undulation of, of the energy is amazing feeling, you know? Yeah. I mean, I don't disagree with you. Sometimes there's things that you learn from that. Let's, let's listen again. Yeah, I mean, maybe we're just hitting it too hard. The other thing was, uh, I think that this is that's this is the mix that we're doing now. This is the mix that has. Uh, for me, I feel like for me, there's no question. I just like it better on. Mm -hmm. But it's interesting. I mean, those are the, I mean, those are it, such subtle differences. It's so cool. I like it. I mean, I, I, for me, it's just like a fun thing to question because I'm kind of like, oh, what's happening? It's like for me, it almost feels like the like the the center's being compressed more. Like when the when the Fairchild comes on, it kind of it's compressing more of the center information. Yeah. So when when you turn it off, all of a sudden you get to hear. I know that I can hear the obviously I can hear the volume change, but there's like when the center's not compressed it feel i think when it, when that when that center kind of comes back it feels like more expansive because that's mm. probably just a trick on the no, ear that's true you know? yeah that's true and we i mean i am using this as a uh oh no this is actually i'm using this as a oh no i'm using it as a midside compressor yeah so yeah that is, that is definitely happening there's so much to learn I mean, you're getting, we're getting into like the 0.00%. Yeah, but that's what's great about it. Yeah, it's fun. <laughs> that's why we do these things. That's why we do it. Well, I feel like, I don't know. Is We've any, done. Anything else you want to add? I don't think so. I mean, I feel like the, the, this is cool because um, we touched on stuff we haven't touched on in the other videos. Yeah. Um, like the rear bus and stuff that, which is fascinating. And, uh, yeah, and I, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's uh, let's make sure there's no questions. I haven't checked on the thing for a bit. No, it's good. Um, yeah, I mean, it's the the thing that's funny about this song is that like it was. I don't know. I think it's a great song, and and I and I was like, it definitely was like one of the songs that you bring into a session, like wanting to treat it as like a special kid and as we started to like work on the record, it didn't end up feeling as special in the sense, like it didn't end up standing out. Like, I feel like the, I mean, it does, it does in the record, obviously. Like it's like, it's like the most poppy evening hymn song of all time, I think at this point, but, but which I it's love. like, yeah, yeah. Which I love too. But it's like, it's like the other songs that were like maybe a bit more meek in production value or some of that, like ended up like, lifting the bar for something like this which made this one kind of an interesting one to mix that's how i felt about it when we were working on it was like man how do we make this how do we make pyrenees as good as i can only be good now like yeah. because i can only be good it's like a really mellow tune but like i think that like like joe joe Shat, joe sax and like josh playing josh's bass and drums on it and like your mix and stuff i was like you know there's an energy there's quiet energy but it's like a thing that i'm still latched onto that I, that concept that like made this one you know, super a challenge, but also like ultimately like super fun to kind of let loose on. And, and, and I think it's like, I, I mean, I think we had, a, this one felt really fun and this one felt like this one really came together in the next stage more arguably more than any of the other ones, I think. Yeah. Well, it's interesting. Cause I feel like the other ones, they were like, well, I think the fear at first was that this one was like kind of hit you over the head as, and the other ones kind of brought you in. 
yeah, yeah. Uh, Beckham Jr. Yeah. But I, I do feel like there's a, le- a layer. I mean, the lyric, lyrically, melodically, it's it's still quite complex, you know. And so it it does. But it's, it's a dance song. But it's also it's just yeah, a pop song too. It's also just pop song. But like there's multiple layers, and you can just keep coming back and listening to it, which is awesome. And um, I could listen to this a bunch more times tonight. So it's so fun. It's awesome. Uh, great. Well, the record comes out tomorrow. Congratulations. And to you, my friend. Cheers. Hold on. What are you drinking tonight? A little Henderson's? This is uh, the new Henderson's. This is my beer now. You have these guys? Whitewater? I might have had it when I was at your place. Man, I love it. It's really good stuff in the Ottawa Valley. Uh, anyways. Okay. Well, cheers. Cheers, buddy. Thanks for your hard work, and thanks for doing these like crazy, techy... Uh, Live mix sessions is super fun for me. Nice to revisit these with you. It feels oh. like we're kind of mixing together. Yeah, I love it. Um, and thanks, people, for tuning in. And we're going to leave this one up, I think, because we didn't uh, swear too much. <laughs> uh, thanks, Gav. Thank you. Talk to you soon. All right, good night. Bye. Right.